Drugs are like water on a pavement, always finds the cracks, usually the crack of a drug mule's ass. Something that schoolies at Bun Vega should think long and hard about at next year's schoolies week. A few weeks ago, that coke was inside a biking mule who spent five hours on a flight from Sydney trying not to crap out his breakfast of room temperature omelette and sausages. Meth zombies are back. They've breached the hard border. We discovered meth was on the menu again from people who do wastewater testing. Scientists go out and collect sewage samples and work out what's in it. Pool water. Next time you think you've got a crap job, spare a thought for the people at the National Wastewater Drug Monitoring Program. It's a bit nutty. The country's poo detectives found more than 65 doses of meth were being taken a day per thousand people in regional WA in April. That was up from 40 doses in December, the same as the national average, and 10 doses last August. Back then, the cops were trumpeting about how meth had doubled in price because there was none of it on the streets. The Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission said the latest wastewater tests showed serious and organised crime groups will always find a way to supply illicit drug markets. Drugs are like water on a pavement, always finds the cracks. Usually the crack of a drug mule's ass. <laughs> the human rectum has been and always will be the transport option of choice for drug traffickers. Put this into your rectum. Ooh. It averages just 12 centimetres in length, but can fit an impressive amount of narcotics in it once packed efficiently. That's just gross. That alone should be enough to put people off. It's something that schoolies at Bun Vega should think long and hard about at next year's Schoolies Week. Mum would be so proud. Snorting a line off some chick's ass might feel gangster cool, but a few weeks ago, that coke was inside a biking mule who spent five hours on a flight from Sydney trying not to crap out his breakfast of room temperature omelette and sausages because he knew it would mean losing 20 grand worth of ice 10,000 metres over South Australia. Yeah, that's funny. He's a mule. <laughs> when COVID stopped the planes, fewer uncomfortably full rectums were landing at Perth Airport and not as many sweaty passengers were facing the cameras on Border Force. I'm confused. We still don't have international flights. And there still aren't that many interstate flights. And we're stopping every truck at Eucla. So how's it getting in? Not by air, not by land. Only one other option. Not into the ports, though. The one good thing about the wharf is going on strike is that avenue's been blocked off. Boats big enough to sail on open seas are mooring off the coast up north and then smaller boats ferry the drugs to shore. Those operations are coordinated, allegedly, by people like this guy. That's Ray Chili, former head of the WA chapter of the Comancheros, who is now thought to be living in Thailand. People like Ray are suspected of being the masterminds connecting big international drug dealers in Mexico, Montenegro and Southeast Asia with distributors in Australia. He's the Christopher Pine of international drug trafficking. I'm a fixer. Allegedly. Once the drugs are on the beach in the Kimberley or the Pilbara, someone picks them up and drives them to medium-level dealers. Some of those people are very well organised to the point of wearing a uniform. Some are just freelancers, like one of Kalgoorlie's finest citizens, Jackie Paul Edwards. Jackie is currently doing six years inside after the cops busted him trying to fill the meth vacuum created by the COVID border closures. Jackie's bookkeeping was so disorganised, he paid for one shipment of meth twice. Bikies and complete f***ing idiots like Jackie then on sell to the street-level dealers we see coming in and out of Perth Magistrates Court every single day. How much do you reckon is landing on the beaches? More than you can possibly imagine. Australia is awash with meth, and for the past 15 years, WA has been addicted like nowhere else. We are the number one destination in the world. In every other country, meth is a gutter drug. The people buying Walter White's blue ice on Breaking Bad were portrayed as the lowest of the low for very good reasons. But over here, it's a drug of choice for celebrities and sports people. And unlike the homeless addicts you see in American cities like Chicago or Baltimore, our users actually have money and are willing to pay top dollar for a product that commands a very slim margin anywhere else. The Mexican cartels discovered this a few years ago and moved into the market. They did what every good business person does when faced with such economic settings. They ramped up prices to find a new supply demand profit equilibrium. We know they've been doing this because the FBI has been monitoring the trade through the Anom app. That's the encrypted messaging app that undercover cops convinced drug dealers around the world was better than WhatsApp or Signal. 
They didn't tell those drug dealers that the cops were actually monitoring their conversations. A few days ago, Australian Federal Police Commissioner Rhys Kershaw revealed that when he was about to press the button on taking the dealers down, there was 10 tonnes of drugs on the water coming to Australia. That surprised even him. That caught us a little bit as far as the breadth of the issue, he said. 10 tonnes of meth is worth a lot of money. Before he moved into his new hostel, old mate Jackie and Cow was getting $6,000 for 10 grams. There are 10 million grams in 10 tonnes. Can you do the maths? Six billion. I use my iPhone. An amount of drugs equal to the market value of Harvey Norman was floating towards Australia in June when the cops started the Anom raids. You're going to need a bigger boat. So next time you hear a cop who's standing in front of a couple of dozen bags of seized drugs say something like this, take it with a grain of salt. You don't export $6 billion of any product unless you know there's a good chance you're going to get most of it to market. Australia has 34,000 kilometres of coastline. Australian Border Force has 10 patrol vessels. Can you do that maths? You do realise I'm not an accountant, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's too depressing. Our radar systems aren't powerful enough to track what's out there. We spent close to $2 billion on something called the Jindalee Operational Radar Network. We were told it could detect threats as far as 3,000 kilometres. A few years ago, a boatload of asylum seekers sailed into Geraldton Port and nobody had a clue they were there. Don't worry about a Chinese aircraft carrier. This thing can't detect a Chinese junk. The cops have got to know the drugs are coming in to have any chance of intercepting them. We're relying for that on the Drug Enforcement Agency in the US. And they're pretty busy with their own problems. So it's a shit show. Coming to a toilet near you. Who the hell are you? I'm Ben Harvey. God damn right.